Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Ash here and welcome back to another episode of TV Commentary. Of course, got three fantastic matches with a return match in the closer uh, that I'm really looking forward to, really excited to show off here. Uh, the return of a good, good friend. But uh, regardless, we do have matches to get into. We do have some games to play. So let's go ahead, folks, and jump straight into match number one. All right, and our first match is going to be Randy Pants taking on Sim Dog. A bit more of a meta-ish matchup. Uh, Warlock Crusader going up against the Warlock Ninja. Most likely some Awaken, maybe some no interaction on the other side here, but we'll see how things go. But easily, just trying to get ourselves into the groove of things just by a simple meta matchup here. Something that I feel like I haven't done in a hot minute with all the other interesting matches that happen uh, here within the game. Anyway, starting things off here, Ryder from the opener, Dojo in response, so yep, pretty clear cut cards for the most part starting things off going into the lumberjack so of course looking for some draw but also some last will stuff but of course these two are very common in no interaction lists so can't be too sure blacksmith coming out dealing with the rider thankfully rider not connecting to the blacksmith uh, avoiding that additional point of damage from lumberjack here but lumberjack just gonna get the trade in anyway into the banshee now from randy okay so got kind of quickly note here banshee not something that you see in no interaction lists uh mainly because they want to go for that spell that burn power uh banshee more or less points to last will so probably that's where i'm thinking randy's going uh so let's see if the awakened matchup can handle uh things like big andrew later down the line here for now barb gonna intercept the banshee does randy have a response it's going to the medal of bravery into the andrew early all right so there's one andrew here banshee gonna chop down into the barbarian giving that andrew that plus two a plus two stat line making that four seven which is fantastic dark better not going to come onto the board though establish its presence here to try and ward off the andrew here trying to see uh, show that if andrew does make the trade dark bender will be the follow-up here to pick it off the board so we'll see if that procs a uh different response out of randy here going for the rat king instead which is a nice little choice here able to provide some good clamp to the board while also providing a lot more bodies here as you can see going for the rat king into the andrew because obviously we're not in the vikings and we don't have a missing journey to follow up that rat king so no point in keeping the upkeep around and uh katana being thrown down onto the andrew as well i think that was the banshee pickup that i might have missed uh from before here so that's being slapped onto the andrew kind of keeping his uh you know cards in hand to a good point here but you know this you know yellow red can draw pretty quickly Things like Tarius Files are certainly in the deck at this point. Other things, maybe like additional Lumberjacks and Banshees uh, and Flying Books. So, a lot of ways that he could draw here. So, kind of playing it because he just knows that, eh, it makes sense to throw on the big boy for now. So, creating the 8-7, which is nice here. But, Simdog responds with a uh, Masuta and Ronin, which are a nice little combo here. Especially with Doja already active. This is going to get him some draw if Randy can't respond, which he can. Blue Fireball taking out the Dojo. Uh, that is a smart choice here. I know a lot of people will be tempted to use it on the Ronin here, but if you do use it on something like the Dojo, you cut off the draw of the deck and realistically cripple the Awakened strategy pretty heavily. They rely on that constant flow of new material to uh, use and activate for their abilities to continue that draw stream. So cutting off the draw here before it can really get out of hand was a good call on Randy's part here. We'll see how uh, Sim is able to respond to this one. Of course, picks up another dojo to replace the one he just lost, which is lovely. And of course, on top of that, getting the sentry golem there. Uh, ignoring the Masuda bug, of course, uh, building into unit. He had enough gold to do it anyway, but probably should have gone golem, then dojo. So we can get that reduced gold count. In case, you know, you never know, those things might come up here. Uh, but regardless, we're going to see the golem hit the board here, the dojo as well. Uh, golem looking to profit off the dojo for a plus one. Uh, and of course, we'll see if Randy's anything to stop it. Uh, Randy for now going with the armory play. So of course our rack gonna make a trade into the Masuda up here Which is nice picking that off so that way it's a uh, one less reawakened target on the board and uh, Positioning a wall of units here for the incoming assault potentially from uh, sim dogs board Badger coming out now though in response here and again not really moving actually in this matchup so far is sim dog uh, I kind of want to think that he's more of the I guess just 
passive defensive type player here or maybe he's built a strategy more for that angle here but knows that he has the advantage in terms of units on the board so he kind of is just sitting back drawing cards with his awakened units and letting his forces build while randy tries to assemble something on his own over here as well uh so we'll see if maybe randy can bring up a bit of offense here we see another rat king unfortunately the arm replacement uh cuts off a rat summon but i don't think it matters too much pushing a lot of bodies on the board here uh although a flame storm can do a lot of damage to this we do need something for the uh, armory which we do have blue firebolt to actually in hand yeah, we are viewing sim dog after all so a flame storm here would have been killer but looks like we're not going to see that as of right now which is fine we do see guards guards is a bit of a weird choice for the purple red awake i'm not sure why they're here they used to be the two one but that change has been yeah you know been here for quite a while so i'm not sure why guards are still here blue fireball they're going to try and chip away the andrew it looks like here yep two blue fireballs will take out that big boy not sure if that was the right play to go to and you could have easily used one of those for the armory to kind of cripple randy's forces here make them more easy to trade into and harder for them to retaliate into the bigger boys with uh that's just a me opinion though i get that andrew is a big scary threat but uh eh, i'm not sure if that was the right call here flash grenade into the hand from uh form from banshee yep english uh flame shield on the ronin here moving out of the way for the inferno that's some good uh good position there uh of course a 6-6 with first strike not easy to uh remove another andrew though hitting the board here perfect for rider gonna get a little bit of value off of that here 5-8 on the andrew below uh, i think we're gonna see a badger gonna die as well. well i think golem's gonna die for sure yep there goes the golem makes sense uh rat king uh rat king unfortunately not being put anywhere badger still being kept alive here all potential reawaken targets and right of awakening is gonna be a target uh that gets or a tool excuse me that's going to be utilized by the ronin there creating an eight six into the headwood fantastic draw there of course headwood's damage is going to do some nasty things to this board here barbarian follow up the dark bender as well looking like we are attempting to push lethal damage if randy can't respond to the ronin priest though is a nice way to counteract this ronin uh, unfortunately we do have to keep it alive because the andrew with flash grenade uh coming in quite handy here popping that ronin and moving in uh, additional units here as you can see tarius files as well so we're gonna kind of create a block here which is fine it kind of protects us from the incoming assault although we know that sim dog has a way to kind of get around this and land some shots onto phase let's see if he can find the line shoden of course coming in ah hitting a zombie uh not exactly the line i probably would have gone for here but definitely more one that's i guess looking to set up for a you know kill next turn i guess guards coming down sure i mean they're not doing a hell of a lot yeah barb and zombie i guess yeah i mean not the line i would have taken for more damage but this is still fine we do get a massive board clear here craxis hello hello you uh killing off the show and generating some cards here that's not gonna be too bad for randy of course drawing a blacksmith uh, from the taurus files we saw that reduced cost after all uh dragon's fire would be good here same with the flame storm looks like we don't find either shodan coming out now gonna be the response for the craxis shodan part two after all salahar soldier following up as well dark bender maintaining his position uh it is a guaranteed four on face from this spot so it makes sense if you can maybe draw out a burn or push him into sudden death for a turn or so that's going to end the game here flame storm gonna hit the board that does put you in the range of dark bender here all we have to do is really remove this blacksmith and that will be game uh, what can we find off the top if we are sim dog demon hunter and golem not going to be it uh <laughs> ah those are two units folks that uh cannot attack when they're summoned of course demon hunter with the first strike and golem with the zero attack uh, from the hand not exactly useful in taking out the three one barbarian so many options but drawing probably the worst case in this scenario here let's hope it doesn't come back to bite him as uh, he's forced to kind of go remove a guard here trying to clean up his position just a little bit uh doing the best that he can under this scenario uh you see him walling up as a way of precaution if you will rocking on the very real threat as well here uh if we have anything to do with these zombies 
or or create more of them that's always fun uh eternal darkness a card that we haven't seen in quite some time here on the tv commentary episodes uh, doing some nice work at creating a lot of zombies, but I think that's going to be game over regardless. We do draw the right for the Headwood Rambo, so will we get it out of all of this mess? We do. We do get the Rambo mess out of all of the zombie targets and potential on the board here to let Simdog claim the win for this episode. And a very close one too, actually. I think based on the amount of zombies and units that were on the board in general, it would be very hard for Simdog to clear all that out without at least finding some way to take in additional damage here only three of those zombies need to connect for the game to end so he definitely escaped that one by the uh the skin of his teeth is that still something that people say anyways uh game number one of course wrapped up all nice and tightly let's go ahead and proceed to game number two though where we have more action coming at you right now all right, folks, in game number two, we'll see Demi Gabe take on Atlas Falters here. Really wanted to show this matchup uh, primarily because it was the only thing that I noticed on uh, this particular day that wasn't actually just a school or rush matchup. I don't know. I guess that that's what the meta is feeling like this year, this time around. It's going to be, hey, I want to go school or rush. Aye, aye, aye. Anyways, uh, purple, uh, green versus warlock pirate here. Uh, we'll see what both guys bring to the table. That isn't the aforementioned school or rush. It looks like we got some additional swarm stuff. Okay, so Atlas kind of picking up maybe where Randy left off in a way here, uh, utilizing some swarm potentially. Uh, we'll see how Demi's going to respond. Going with the elvish thief out of the opener here. That's not too bad. Uh, we could get the imp down. No, we're gonna get the altar down um okay i mean it's a building setup i'm not completely mad about that but we probably should have gotten the imp out to try and burn off the elvish thief oh okay wizard that's not great uh thankfully we have the response to this we can blue fire the wizard trade two rats into the elvish thief that does give our opponent unfortunately a lot of treasure to work with uh bring him up to i believe seven gold for the next turn here yeah four plus 37 so it could be some big things coming out here oh excuse me eight off the metal here we do get a mordok by turn four very very scary stuff there not a whole lot of ways that uh we can out this right away we could use a murder but not in the hand unfortunately dagger storm all three on the maddie love this game baby all right there goes the maddie no damage done to the mordok ship of the damned coming in doing its thing scope dwarven scope oh dear this is going to hurt uh horseman coming out of the first mordok shot taking away the spawner buildings Looks like Demi knows the swarm game, so kind of trying to cut it off at the source here. Armory, though, is going to do some nice work here. It does uh, help clean up in or in tandem with the Imp here, Imp and Rat. Unfortunately, Headless Horseman coming in, taking out the Altar, really, really shuts us down. And potentially is the worst case of RNG I've seen in this game in a hot minute. I've seen some bad stuff, you know, Salahar Rider hitting the 2 HP Castle, the Rambo Headwood we saw last game. Those were pretty rough folks but nothing quite like this the armory removal of a headless horseman proc so that way we cannot kill the mordok and this thing's probably just gonna run away with it honestly that that's probably the game right there uh, Mordok getting another free shot here uh, lumberjack getting some draw fine sure go for it yep mordok killing off out oh, generating a wraith even better, bro. Look at that 3 8 body. And one eyed Maddie summoning the lore master, bro. He's already dead. What are you doing? Oh, and another Steve. Again, this is just brutal. Lumberjack is not the draw I wanted to see here. We got a Ranger out. Ranger can do some defense here. And gets another Wraith, man. I right, we needed the horseman to show up there at the very least. But no. Let's give him another big old body. Lord Master getting a shifting technique here, getting a Dwarven Greed, I don't think it matters. Infiltrate, sure, Stealth Atarius. Wraith's going to town here now, doing 6 damage a turn at 16 health. There is no way Atlas gets out of it, buddy, and I am so sorry for that. The string of RNG that needed to happen for that to work out is just brutal, but Demi will walk out of a matchup where, you know, I gotta give it to him. He did do the match, he did do a funny combo, but... Ay, yeah, yeah, man. That was it was brutal. You had like the RNG gods up your ass at that point. Anyways, I th I think I'm gonna get myself, folks. That was game number two, a well fought matchup, uh, although be it a rough one to watch. But that does lead us into our final matchup, folks. So let's go ahead and jump right into game number three. 
All right, folks, and for our final matchup here, OGs might remember this familiar name. It's Crate Brick taking on Davillo. Crate Brick making a return. I guess maybe peaking some interest here from that CNC2 revamp. Uh, I can't really say for certain, but he's back. He's going with a Viking Crusader matchup against the Viking Ninja. So, Crate, let's see what you bring to the table here, buddy, as we, of course, jump right in. Um uh all right well i mean there's wind mage there's cultist there's rack king there's reinforce that is a selection of cards i will say that for sure uh, i'm gonna lead off with the cultist here that's all good he, into the incoming lumberjack that's fine i'm gonna try and persuade the lumberjack to look the other way but kunoichi coming out in response here that's gonna push quite hard against the cultist we'll see if uh well, I guess Kraber's out of the Wind Mage here. He can do that and push the Kunoichi back, which I think he's going to probably do, right? Yeah. Wind Mage value. Let's go. So Kunoichi gets pushed back out of the uh, range of the Cultist. So that way we don't lose said Cultist in game. That's great for us. Uh, cultist coming in. Part 2. Priest giving all these guys some additional health. That's going to be quite nice here, actually. Creating some mini wizards. Uh, racking journey as well in the hand now that I'm looking at it uh, for the first time in a hot second uh, That is a dream combo here. So I think we're working with some kind of range rat king shenanigans uh, When mage taking out the freezing pillar here, it looks like uh, reinforced going in the castle We don't have answers for the kunoichi unfortunately, which is Unfortunate, but okay. We can still work with this cloak of ice coming in gonna freeze off a lot of the board here storm strike as well Okay, um I do think that the cloak was probably useless here if you're just going to use the storm strike anyway. Uh, I mean, I guess it, it does freeze the cultist, but there's nothing stopping the wind mage above from doing something else or using something that he could summon out as well to do the job. So, I don't know. Using the cloak of ice here feels like a major waste because, I mean, we're just losing this anyway. Didn't really accomplish much except for freezing the cultist back for a turn, which in hindsight is not going to do anything unless Davillo had any sort of push against it. So... Yeah, it's a tough play to make here, but we do lose the Kunoichi. Uh, we do now set up the Iraq King combo. Uh, Crate Brick, of course. It probably set up another Smith, right? Yeah, there you go. Smith in the bottom corner. A little weird uh, chain here opportunity or cleave opportunity here if, uh, Dem if Devillo had it. I almost said uh, Demi. We saw Demi in the last game. This is uh, the wrong game. But regardless, Racking coming in now with the Blacksmith and enough gold for Mr. Journey, folks. That is a. Uh, 16 points of damage worth rat king if we had temple at this point that'd be game but unfortunately for crate just not enough to end it but i don't think devilla can really do much here no board a lot of cards in hand but only working at seven gold with a lot of rats and no potential burns or board clears panda's cool i guess but not enough to deal with the literal army of rats and with that said that's gonna be it folks that's gonna clean it up right there and then uh, Devilla surrendering, knowing the writing on the wall for Crate Brick to walk away with quite a dominant performance here. Showing up with the blue yellow Mystic Rat range combo, I guess is what we could say that was. I mean, two cultists, a wind mage, definitely a lot of range power being represented here. But of course, the Rat King combo, the star of the show here, doing the dirty work to uh, get the win and. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's good to see Crate back doing his thing. I don't know how many matches he's doing nowadays, but it's always cool to see a familiar face, an old soul wandering back in, uh, you know, delivering the beatdowns and uh, doing it well. So welcome back, Crate, in that kind of sense. But folks, that is going to wrap it up here for this episode of TV Commentary. Let's go ahead and close this video out properly and uh, do all that fun stuff. Alright folks, and with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this edition of TV Commentary. If you did, then be sure to let me know by leaving your thoughts down in the comment section below. As well as being sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Be sure to share with your friends, and of course, subscribe if you're new or haven't done so already. We are on the road to 1K. We'd be really grateful to have you join us on this ride. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to cover all that I need to do for now. So, until next time guys, stay gaming.